I can put my frame making tools to one side and the things which now come into play are the staple gun with staples. I use six millimeter staples, six millimeter staples. It's got a 13 and then slash six next to it. I'm going to need my trusty scissors and I'll of course need the canvas itself. So this thing is pretty secure once it's been hammered into place so I can move it about. Um, quick check of the canvas to check everything's in order. This looks like a good piece. So what now follows is extensive measuring and you'll need some rulers. So I've got a, a selection of ruler lengths here because if you're measuring big pieces of canvases, uh, measuring big pieces of canvases, if you're measuring big pieces of canvas, um, it stands to reason that you'll need a longish ruler or rulers to measure it with. So this one is a meter long. You'll need a bit of tolerance. So first of all, um, I've mentioned the beading around the front. So the beading meets up with the canvas itself. I'm just going to inspect this side of it as well, because if there's any nasty bits in it, <clears throat> you can centre your canvas so that it excludes those bits. There's a little bit of a funny bobble there, so I'm going to put my canvas more over towards this side. So the, the, the frame size is 72 by 72 centimetres, but I'm not going to cut the canvas of 72 by 72 because it's going to be wrapping round. But you knew that already. <laughs> I've measured and I find that adding six and a half centimetres is perfect on each side. I do want the back to look pretty neat. I don't want the canvas to really go further than the edge of the stretcher bar itself. So you can see that meets up along the edge. So it's a case of measuring now. I'm going to line up my canvas close to the corner. And I know that I need six and a half centimetres extra. I do find as well as long rulers, it is handy to have a short one because it's just easier to move around. So if you're measuring just small distances, I should be able to do this with arithmetic. It's 6.5 times 2 plus 72. 6.5 times 2 is 13 plus, so the math was never my strong point, 13 plus 72, um, 75, 85 centimetres, is that right? 85, yes, that is right by the looks of it. So there's actually quite a lot of mathematics involved in art, <laughs> particularly if you're dealing with canvases and grids and things. 85. And then I can measure along the top. It's a bit out of the shot. And I can draw my line, which I'll be trimming along. You do need to get this right first time because you can't <laughs> add fabric once you cut it, unfortunately. <laughs> I find even when you're, when you've measured things, it is good to like physically just have a look. So I've, I've measured that that's my 85 centimetres required of, cat, of fabric, but I am just folding it as well, because at this stage I can add any more if needed, and I can't do that once I've cut it. And I'm just checking also, there was a funny knobble I was trying to get rid of. Ah, yeah. So this is good. I've managed to, luckily I've got enough canvas that I can, I can be a bit choosy about getting it on the nicest bit. So I can start to cut that. So here goes. No turning back now. So don't rush it. 
These techniques are a bit similar to what upholsterers do, I think. The whole stapling fabric to wood thing. Hopefully there's enough space in this canvas. Hang on, just had a moment of... Oh, it's a bit... <laughs> it's a bit tight. I hadn't realised. Okay, interesting. It's all, it's all fine. <laughs> I was worried there for a minute I didn't have actually a big enough piece of canvas, but it's fine. There's like literally two millimetres, uh, not millimetres, there's two centimetres to spare. So I'm just going to mark that in. 85 again. Uh, and 85. Um, yeah, so cut, off we go. Canvas is quite expensive, so you want to be sparing with it. I try and get as much usage, if I buy a metre length of it, I try to use as much of the canvas as I can for economical reasons. I don't need that. So I've now got a square piece of canvas. It is 85 centimetres by 85 centimetres for a stretcher which is 72 by 72 centimetres. What should now happen is that it should be the right <laughs> size, hopefully. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be having any problems. You might also find it's a bit too big at times. It's a little bit too big, maybe. I don't really like the canvas to overlap off the, off the wood. Yeah, it's too big. Interesting. Um, is that going to be the same on both dimensions? Yeah, I'm going to take a little bit off. How much am I going to take off? I'm going to take half a centimetre off both sides. So this is fine. The first time I did it, it was slightly too big. If I'd done it slightly too small, I would be in trouble there. start to now, it's only a half a centimetre I'm trimming off, but it's going to make all the difference. So there we go. This is, an ex this is now an exact square of 84.5 centimetres on each length. So if you were working on um, non primed canvas, it doesn't, wouldn't matter which side was on the face down, but this, this is a white primed canvas, it's primed on one side, so I've laid that on the floor, and I lay my lovingly made stretcher bar, um, stretcher frame, on top of it. Yeah, that's fine. Um, it's helpful to have actually, ooh, loaded your staple gun, as this process does use quite a lot of staples surprisingly. So I've got my staples at the ready for because this will definitely run out. Essentially we are ready to go. Right so we want this lined up as well as we can. So I'm just spending a little bit of time now getting it right. We've got a hand put together wooden frame, so wood is already non-exact. The, the hand putting together part is non-exact. And then we're trying to wrap fabric, which is another organic material around it. It's never all going to be like millimetre perfect. Even, even I manage to forget that sometimes. At some point you just have to get on with it. Seems all right. 
Okay, I think we're now good to go with this, believe it or not. Now, when I was putting the bars together, I said there was no magic special technique. Um, but when, the, when it comes to putting the fabric on, there is a magic special technique. <laughs> so, um, you're working in a opposites kind of fashion. So, I'll explain as, as we go along. I'm going to put in my first locating staple here. Bonk. In that goes. Um, and then it's always opposites. So I'm going to be rotating this a lot as I go. I'm just recentering it again each time. But well, I won't need to keep doing that, it's just in this initial phase. So this canvas is going to be stretched, like literally stretched on. So yeah, I'm pulling the canvas quite tightly around. So <laughs> um, north and south, if you will, are done. I quite like using the compass points as a reference. And I just need to do the east and west reference points now. So I'm pulling a little bit here for the east part. And then pulling hard for the west part. So that's, that's kind of like the, the four principal staples done. And you can see where I've stapled, oops, it's just sort of in the middle of that distance. And it's just a case of opposites again now. So I'm gonna do one to the right and left of my, I can't remember which was which. <laughs> Doesn't really matter on a square, well, it's different on a square canvas to a rectangular one. So here, one to the left and right of what I think was my first staple, but probably wasn't. And I'm going to flip the canvas round and do the opposite side. I try to save my hands a bit. I would normally only do one canvas per day. I, I, I wouldn't, it's probably going to hurt your hands quite a lot if you do like five canvases all at once. Yeah, for this reason as well, I swap hands. Uh, it depends on what side of the canvas you're working on, but it's, it's actually useful to use both hands for stapling. So I've done, let's say, let's say that was north and south. I'm now back on the, doing the east and west. Here I do a hand swap. And I'm pulling as much as I can each time with my thumb and forefinger. You can see the pattern that's emerging here. Three and then the three low opposite ones and then three here and three here. At the moment, it looks all, oh yeah, you do get this diamond shape, that always happens um, as, as you're working. But that will disappear with any luck. So it just goes on. So we now have five on the, um, I've forgotten the dimensions, the things again, but I'm saying that's north and then south. Are they call cardinal directions. Cut. I might have invented that. Right, so that's um, we've now got five north, five south, and we've still only got three east and three west. The staples are probably about two centimetres or so apart. 
I'm not being hugely precise. So we've got five east and west, five north and south. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I've got seven on the north and south, seven on the west, and only seven on the east. So there's a few crinkles and lumps and bumps in the, in the fabric, but that will all disappear, especially with the gessoing process because this, can, this fabric has been folded, but the, yeah, the stretching largely gets rid of that. And then there's also the, um, the little corners, uh, corners? corner wedges, which add additional tension. So we're creeping, um, I just indicated my fingers, um, I've done, that distance on, on each of the edges now. We're coming in towards the corners and it's a good time to talk about the corners. <laughs> Therefore, I can use my one that I've already done. Let's imagine this is gonna be um, like a mountain landscape. Sort of, that's the horizon line. It's gonna be shown horizontally. So you can bear in mind that people might see the sides of the canvas more than they're likely to see the top and the bottom. You see there's a little triangle there. That's unavoidable, there's always going to be that. Um, that is just a factor of folding. But I've made sure that it's in the least visible place, bearing in mind what's going to be on the painting. So those little triangles are going to be at the tops and the bottoms. So I'm going to try and do this with a bit of assistance from my chair. So this is the situation we have here. And I'm going to make a little fold there. It's just a little tuck. So here's, here's fully opened out. And then I'm just going to make a little tuck a little double, a little doubling there. And basically, I'm going to pull it tight and then I'm going to pull this bit down. So that gives me my tuck. Um, I could demonstrate having the little I could demonstrate having the little triangle not on top. So I would in that case just move my tuck down a little bit differently and then fold it this way instead. I'm going to roughly do my folds now because you, you need a little bit of free, free um, like not stapled down space to work with here. If, you, if I'd stapled right up to the edges, it's kind of really difficult to approximate the folds. Okay, so I've roughly done the top, and likewise I'm going to roughly do the bottom. Okay, that one seems to be in place. So I'm doing the tops, the top two are folded in the same way and the, top, the other two, the underneath two are folded in the same way. Um, I do find it's also helpful to have a small screwdriver because that can just help you to, it's a flat headed screwdriver, it can help you just push parts of the fold in. Now my corners are done in rough form. I'm going to continue with a bit more stapling. 
gradually creeping towards the corners. Still working in opposites. Ah, we've run out of staples. So as predicted, when you're doing lines of staples, they tend to wander about as well. I need to reset here and go back to the middle. Yeah, you can see that they're sort of wandering about a bit. And then I've gone back to the area it's supposed to be. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Trying to stay systematic. One, two, three, four, five. I got a bit out of sequence there. Never mind. Fabric's getting nicely tight. Here you can see we've still got a, a bit of a shape, a rhombus kind of shape, but it's creeping out towards the edges. Um, yeah, so let's continue. A lot of this is practice, obviously. And you'll discover your own favourite way of doing things, which might differ from mine slightly. We're getting closer to the corners, <laughs> those dreaded corners. So that's, that's about the distance now that I'm up to. There is a fold line evident here, but don't worry, that's just going to disappear. I'm glad now that I've pre-roughly folded the corners because there's not much room to work with now. It's getting tighter. The beading is doing a good job because the, the canvas is really not in contact with any of this at all. It's, it's in contact with the beading. So along this edge, it's firm, but when I press in, it's not, it's not touching against any wood. Uh, well, I have to press really hard for it to make it touch against wood. We're really close to the edges now. I'll show you where I'm up to. Focus, focus. I'm not being so strict with my pattern anymore. I'm just, because obviously the, uh, in the process of doing my stapling, some of staples are closer and some are further. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it now, trying to work in it, in an even pattern around. So the system is good to get to get going with, um, but then you can be a bit more free as you progress. So I'm just tightening up the fold a little bit with the screwdriver. You can kind of adjust the fold a little bit. I don't, I don't want the edge of that bit to be too close to the edge of the stretcher bar. So you can manipulate slightly how the fold is working. It's, the fabric's quite stiff, so it doesn't spring back straight away or anything like that. It lets you kind of see what you're getting. So my little triangle, my little napkin shape here is at the top. That's, that's what I want. And I'm just going to press into the fold a bit more with the screwdriver. So I can begin to staple, actually physically staple this fold into place. So I'm going to get ever so close up to it, first of all. So you can see where my staples are. Whoops. You see where I've got to. I definitely would not want to be starting the fold at this point because I would never be able to get hold of the fabric.
on stapling the fold into place, um, you can use different angles. Doesn't have to all be square shaped. So second corner number two. I'm gonna to have to edit lots of this video out because <laughs> this literally takes so long. So you'll hopefully be seeing a, a condensed, <laughs> a truncated version of this. We can see that's done and that's done. And you can see the front of the canvas, this is now getting all nice and flat. A lot of the strange rhombus shapes and things that had been in there originally disappeared now that it's under tension. Time to tackle the final two corners. I'm trying to just pull the edge away a little bit. The first few, um, the first few canvases I did were quite, well, were definitely messy. And they sort of progressively got a bit neater over time. They're still not exactly perfect. I think that's what I'm going to have to do. There. I'm using a lot of staples. <laughs> it is possible to remove these. Um, well, that's a topic for another video. But that's that corner dealt with. There. You can see the canvas is tight because it's sort of pulling against the staples. I think you can slightly see that maybe here. There's a bit of pull, which is good. That's actually exactly what we want. You can actually hear there's a bit of tension. Essentially, this would be ready to paint on once the final corner's done, but I'm going to be gessoing this because it just adds that extra, even, just makes it even better, basically. It kind of makes it an obligation that you do a good painting after going through all this trouble. I'm just trying to keep the edge of the overlap a little bit away from the actual physical edge of the canvas. And there's the fourth corner. Um, yeah, fourth corner finally done. There we have it, folks. I'm happy with the, well, I would say I'm, I, I know that this is correct for this point in the process, how that is in terms of tension, but I will be gessoing this as a next step um, to just make it that even bit better. The little triangles, the folded triangles, are there at the tops and also what I'm calling the, the bottom of this piece and the sides do not show that little triangle popping out. So that's the end of the part about the physical stretching of the canvas.